evening. You're watching the main news on HK IBC. I'm Clayton. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. The observatory issues number nine as Typhoon Koinu brings heavy rain and strong winds to Hong Kong. Israel launches retaliatory airstrikes in Gaza as the death toll mounts quickly in its latest conflict with Palestinian militants. And Tang Yiting fails to land a medal in karate, but Hong Kong still finished with their best ever performance in the Asian Games. The observatory has issued the number nine typhoon signal tonight as Koino lashes past the southern waters of Hong Kong, bringing heavy rain and strong winds to the region. Macy Mock tells us more. As typhoon Koinu edges closer to Hong Kong, measures are taken to minimize damage at so-called flooding black spots. This including Hang Fa Chun, where estate management set up water barriers near the promenade to prevent waves from flooding facilities. At 12.40 p.m., the observatory raised the number 8 northeast scale or storm signal, replacing the strong wind signal number 3, which had been in force for 43 hours. The impact from Koi Nu was evident as downpours and strong winds pounded the city. But many people ignored warnings to stay away from the shoreline. Some decided to brave the elements and shoot photos at the Tsim Sa Chui promenade. The inclement weather also affected businesses in the tourist hotspot with shops and restaurants shuttered for the day. Over in Czech Lap Kok, the airport authority said 130 flights were delayed for around 30 minutes on average. Another 90 flights, most of them heading to or from the mainland and Japan, were cancelled. This woman said she arrived at the airport well ahead of time over fears of traffic chaos. City bus. Kowloon motor bus and long wind bus have gradually suspended services a few hours after the number 8 signal was in force. Trains on the MTR network, however, continue to operate at less frequent intervals. The government received numerous reports of fallen trees throughout the day. Two street cleaners sustained minor injuries after they were struck by twigs, which fell from a tree on Ventris Road in Happy Valley. Firefighters arrived to remove the remaining unstable branches. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. The observatory says the weather will remain unsettled in the next couple of days. At 6 p.m., Typhoon Cornu was estimated to be about 70 km south of Hong Kong. And it's forecast to move northwest or west northwest slowly, edging closer to the Pearl River estuary. The intense rain bands associated with Cornu are affecting Hong Kong. In the past couple of hours, about 30 millimeters of rainfall were recorded over many places of Hong Kong Island and eastern Kowloon. Locally, heavy squally showers expect today and tomorrow. The neighboring Macau also issued the number eight signal at 4:30 p.m. Winds were strong even in dense urban areas like Hawker Street. But the impact was much smaller in Fai Chi K, where only some drizzling rain was seen without strong winds. Some residents went out as usual, but some supermarkets in low-lying areas closed early and installed water barriers at the entrance. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, meanwhile, also shut at 2.30 p.m. Authorities urged travelers to adjust their travel plans and closely monitor the weather and transport updates. In other news, police and the civil aid service mounted another large-scale search in Maung Shan for a schoolboy who went missing since Wednesday. Officers split into groups to score Ma Aung San Country Park this morning as the weather began to deteriorate. 
17-year-old Ma Xiuzhen was last seen at Shekmun MTR station on Wednesday. The Form 6 student from Diocesan Boys School is believed to have headed towards Sa Ting. His mother, who appealed to the public for help, said Zhen had been dealing with physical illness and mental pressure. The financial secretary warned that Hong Kong could see a larger-than-expected fiscal deficit this year, after land sale revenue could f fall well short of the initial target. But Pao Chen insisted the city's public finances remain robust and authorities will manage the books in a prudent manner. We will take it in our stride, Development Chief Bernard Lin said last week when asked if she was worried about missing the revenue target from land sales. The remarks came after the government has so far racked in $11 billion from land sales, a far cry from its annual target of $85 billion. Even Finance Chief Pao Chen admitted the situation was not ideal. 今年的赤字可能都會比預算案的時候大啦 our deficit this financial year could be worse than what the budget originally estimated Chen conceded during a radio interview this morning the financial secretary had predicted a deficit of 54 billion dollars for the 2023 to 2024 financial year after announcing a 140 billion dollar deficit for 2022 to 2023. He reassured the public that the government's finances remained very stable and robust in the medium to long term. Meanwhile, there are mounting costs to slash stamp duties on property and stock transactions. In response, Chen said authorities will take a pragmatic approach based on prevailing market conditions. On a more positive note, the finance minister pointed out that inbound tourists have returned to 70 to 80 percent of pre-pandemic levels. He added the government will continue to lure strategic enterprises to set up shop in Hong Kong, even after 20 or so companies have agreed to invest $30 billion in the past few months. Turning overseas, nearly 800 people have died so far in the ongoing conflict between Hamas militants and Israel. The latest round of violence started yesterday after southern Israel came under rocket attack from the Gaza Strip. Sachin Kadavi reports. A heavy-handed response was expected from Israel. And airstrikes conducted yesterday flattened many buildings in the Gaza Strip. Panicked residents were seen running for their lives as the missiles rained down from above. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu declared this was going to be a long war and not an operation as Gaza continued to bear the brunt last night. Earlier yesterday, Hamas militants launched a major offensive from the Gaza Strip and breached the Israeli border under the cover of rocket attacks. Israeli army personnel and civilians were held hostage and taken back to Gaza, including women and children. Their lives now depend on whether Israel agrees to swap them with Palestinian prisoners being held captive in Israeli jails. Many civilians were taken away from their homes in the southern city of Ofakim. Some of the lucky ones were rescued by Israeli security forces. Israeli forces are on the move and border reinforcements have now retaken the post from where the Hamas militants entered Israel. But many of them have spread out through southern Israel and authorities have asked citizens to be vigilant. The bloody conflict has so far claimed 800 people from both sides. With the Israeli offensive escalating in the coming days, Palestinian deaths will most likely outnumber Israeli casualties. Sachin Katwi, HKIBC. Up to 2,000 people are estimated dead from the powerful earthquakes in western Afghanistan, with thousands more injured. <laughs> the 
Videos emerging from the stricken city of Herat showed a child being rescued from the debris. It was not known if she survived. The first quake measuring 6.3 in magnitude on Saturday morning local time, followed by strong aftershocks. The quakes are among the deadliest to strike the country in two decades. A Taliban spokesman said half a dozen villages were destroyed, with hundreds of civilians buried under the rubble. On to the weather now. Cloudy with occasional heavy rain tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 24 and 27 degrees. Conditions will improve midweek. And now let's take a look at the weather around the world. And that is our main news for Sunday night. Join us for more news at 11. But don't go anywhere because we're about to bring you the Asian Games closing ceremony live on HK IBC. Stay tuned and good night.